You know, honestly, I totally get why so many Zelda fans out there hate Zelda 2 so much. I mean, I do, I really do, because back in the early 2000s, I myself was a huge Metal Gear Solid fan, and I, along with many other people, got totally pissed when Metal Gear Solid 2 finally came out, and for some reason, they actually dared to replace the most badass, most kick-ass video game character in all of history, period, thank you Sean Spicer, for this little blonde punk-ass bitch named Raiden for most of the game. And the funny thing was, we still had all the game mechanics that we had grown to love from the original game. It was all still there, improved upon even. And yet still, Christ were we pissed. <laughs> now, with Zelda 2, like I need to tell you, but the opposite was true. You all got to keep your treasured main character, Link, the most popular silent protagonist of all of time. But unfortunately, all the game mechanics that you had grown to love with that first Hyrule outing completely thrown out the window. So I get why you're pissed. I get why you burn effigies of this game, same as terrorists burn the American flag in the Middle East. But you see, personally for me, I never really had any of that animosity built up towards Zelda 2 myself. Because honestly, if you'll forgive me, I was never a fan of that original Zelda when it first came out. Heck no! No, I never really latched onto this one when I was a little kid back in the day. Because you see, to me, look, two things when I was seven years old. Number one, look, Zelda was too much frickin' responsibility for a seven-year-old. Seriously, this game was too much responsibility. I mean, you can argue to me all you want about how revolutionary the original Zelda was back in the day with all that freedom. It granted you, the player, to figure it all out, but freedom is just a fancy word for responsibility. Probably explains why deep down most people don't want it. I mean, sure, they want freedom from their responsibilities, but that's like wanting to go for a swim without getting wet. You know what I mean? At seven years old, it wasn't that I had the freedom <laughs> to explore this kingdom and save it. It was that I had the responsibility to. And responsibility is kind of like kryptonite to seven-year-olds. I don't know if you know that or not. Okay, responsibility is pretty much kryptonite for everybody. <laughs> But no, so okay, there's number one. Number two, Zelda 1 was such an ugly shit kingdom. How come nobody ever talks about this? Even when I was a little kid and I played this one, I was like, fuck, this game is hideous. I mean, everything is covered shit brown in this game. How come nobody talks about this? Really, the whole kingdom of Hyrule looks like shit. It's dirty and dilapidated. It's nothing but barren wastelands and ruins and graveyards with a population of just a couple of crazy old people living in caves somewhere. It's basically basically an 8-bit version of North Korea, I couldn't wrap my brain around it back then. Why did so many kids my age play the hell out of this game? You couldn't even jump in it for Christ's sake! Who ever heard of a Nintendo game where you couldn't jump, right? Okay, so from this perspective, Zelda 2 was a dramatic improvement in every single way. Zelda 2 was a lot prettier to look at. They totally eased up on using that shit brown all the time. They added some nice blue and green. The graphics were better. There were towns upon towns filled with actual people, not just random crazy people living in caves somewhere. This was the most populated Zelda of all time, period. Thank you, Sean Spicer. And I feel that your interactions with all the towns really made up for the heart of the game. It really helped to give you the feeling of actually saving a, a real life living breathing kingdom not just a bunch of dead trees and graveyards really the towns are what's special to me about Zelda 2 the townspeople help you with everything giving you all sorts of magical spells and sword techniques and casual sex even lots of casual sex did Link ever get any nookie in Zelda 1 I don't think so so yeah growing up as a kid this was the Zelda I could actually sit down and appreciate because this game was as two-dimensional and as linear as my brain pan was at the time not to mention that you could actually jump in this one, so yay! So in conclusion, once again, I totally get why for a Zelda game, this gets so much hate. But just simply as a game on its own, I feel that Zelda 2 really deserves a lot more love, because frankly, the greatest flaw of this game is always gonna be simply its name. If this game was named anything else, ah, uh, Bidley Quest, for example, <laughs> My book. Then I'm sure it would be considered one of the most treasured NES classics of all time, with all sorts of next generation sequels. After all, this game was a Metroidvania before Metroidvania was even a thing. So maybe give it a try if you haven't yet already, and if you're a Zelda fan and you've already played through it and you hate it, replay it again and just simply give it a different name. Call it Bailey Quest instead, and then tell me what you think of it. And if anybody out there after listening to this wants to subscribe to this channel, well, awesome, because I've been doing this for well over four years now, and I've only got 125 subscribers to my name. Ah! <laughs>
funny, I know. But perhaps if you click that subscribe button, you could be subscriber number 126. Maybe even number 127, the sky's the limit. But check out my YouTube page sometime. I might just have something you're interested in. I review movies, books, games, anime. I make opinion pieces where I like to talk about all sorts of crazy things, like how freedom and responsibility are both the exact same thing. I like to philosophize. I love to bust out some psychology every now and then. I'm Justin M. Bailey, and I write novels, and I play video games, and hope you'll join me again sometime. Thank you, bye.